It's been three years since hip hop star Chinks was shot and killed. While his family stands strong in their fight for justice, the two men charged with his murder are off the streets. Now the NYPD and the Queens DA say they'll prove the case in court. Hip hop star Lionel Chinks Pickens was murdered on May 17, 2015. The NYPD says he was shot 11 times at point blank range while in his Porsche. This time of the year is tough on his widow and the mother of their three children, Janelli Caceres Pickens. It's hard, you know. Um, it's like no matter how much time passes, you constantly have to relive those images. The NYPD says the alleged murderers stalked chinks and picked the perfect location, boxed in by construction barriers with no video cameras. This was a targeted and he was hunted. After a two-year investigation and with a grand jury indictments in their hands, Queen's South homicide Quincy, why did detectives you do it? arrested Quincy Homer and Jamar Hill well, last December. Lieutenant Rudolph you? believes they have the right guys. Extremely convinced. Uh, my detectives work extremely hard day and night, and they uh, compounded a mount of evidence uh, built against this defendants. Before the arrest, Janelli says she ignored speculation and gossip, never gave up hope, and cooperated with detectives, who she says kept her informed every step of the way. If I would have allowed myself to be consumed by the rumors or the allegations, um, I would have been around no one. I, I would have secluded myself from everybody, and I didn't want to live like that. I just had faith that the detectives would do their job and find the right person. The detectives did incredible amounts of investigative work, and we traveled to probably half a dozen states tracking down leads. Uh, any kind of lead that came up, even how far-fetched it might have seemed, we followed up on it. The court appearances for the two suspects, both charged with second-degree murder, are underway. Every time, Janelli comes within feet of the men who allegedly took away the love of her life. It's very emotional. It's not a day that I've been to court that I don't cry my eyes out. But because the details are so disturbing, as you hear them now, it's just like to know that he was hunted like an animal um, and never given a chance to defend himself in any type of way. He, we are staying on top of it and we are going to keep it in the public eye until the day that this is finally over. There have been many developments in the case and for Chinks' family. Let's get right into it with our panel. Joining me is Somia Krishnamurthy. She's a music journalist. Somia, great to have you. Great to be here. Also with us is Janelli Caceres Pickens. She's Chink's wife, mother of the three children, owner of her catering business called Nellie's Kitchen, and she's pursuing her college degree, which she should have uh, very soon. Janelli, great to have you with us. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Also with us is Lieutenant Richard Rudolph. He's the commanding officer of Queen South Homicide in the NYPD. He led the team that cracked the case. Janelli, let me start with you on this. How are you and the kids doing right now? Um, we're doing well. You know, around this time is always hard. So, you know, this week has been a little rough for them. Um, tomorrow we'll just be together as a family and we'll step out for a little while just to, you know, gather with the fans and everybody at the store. But for the most part, we're doing great. In terms of how it's been raising the kids as a single mom and still supporting them and still doing all the promotion work and still having that constant pressure of following the case and, and working with the, you know, with the police and with the DA and everybody, what has that been like? Give us a sense of what your life has been like because mm -hmm. just two of those things yeah. sound exhausting. <laughs> it is. It is. It's overwhelming sometimes, um, especially with school and the business and then having three kids on top of that who all are in different age ranges so they're all over the place and having to keep up with everything and then still maintain some form of social life and still be able to you know do things for myself it's hard it's hard sometimes I, I go crazy I want to pull my hair out but I can't so <laughs> But you, you've, you've just you've kept it together in an amazing way. I think yes. that's been an example for a lot of people. And I know from day one I said it to you and I say it every time. It's just you've handled the situation where there was so much pressure. There was a lot going on on social media, a lot yeah. of just, you know, negativity as well, too. And you just handled it in the public spotlight with with tremendous dignity. So I think Thank that's you. been an example for for a lot of us. Thank you. So so that it's good to hear. And the kids are doing well? Yes, they are. All right, they're, they're getting well. So I mean, give everybody a, a, a perspective for those people who are, are new to hip hop or new to the show, just where Chinks was musically and why this case is, and his, his music is, especially and his life story has just resonated so strongly with so many people. So Chinks was very much an instrumental part of New York hip hop and anyone who's followed the rise of 
French Montana and the Coke Boys knows who Chanks is. And he was very much known for his, um, for the Coke Boys tapes and his 2012 breakout, I'm a Coke Boy, which you hear still to this day on the radio or at concerts, at clubs. So he was really on the precipice of having his big debut. Um, Welcome to JFK was right around the corner at the time of his passing. But those of us who have followed New York rap know people like Stack Bundles and Max B, French Montana, Harry Fraud. We know the name Tranks. And I think his death really affected New York hip hop and hip hop as a whole. I mean, anytime we lose someone, especially a promising rising star, it really affects the culture. And affects a lot of people. Lieutenant Rudolph, there were a lot of people in the very beginning that said this is never going to be solved. This is a case of another hip hop artist. It's just going to be, you know, another unsolved mystery. What made you so determined to try to try to make arrests in this case? Well, anytime somebody is killed in Queens, we are going to follow any leads to to the absolute end. It doesn't matter uh, if he's a rap star or he's a drug dealer or domestic violence. Any murder that uh, is committed in, in uh, Queens, we're going to hunt it down. And you looked into you looked into Chink's past. You investigated this. Did you get a lot of cooperation from people, or, or how did give us a general sense of what kind of challenges you faced? Well, our first help was from Janelle. She was a rock through this whole thing. I mean, uh, she probably we only met uh, a couple of times in the beginning. She probably doesn't remember. She dealt mostly with my detectives, uh, Scalisi and Santangelo. Um, and then one of the key pieces of evidence was uh, Chinks' cell phone, and I thought they brought that to us, right? So that pretty much started. So if we don't have any witnesses to our crime, although there was another person in the car that was shot, um, he wasn't uh, able to identify the shooter. So if we don't have any witnesses and we didn't have any uh, video of the incident, we're up against it. So now we have to start with our victim, and our victim is actually going to be the one that's going to help us solve this case. So I didn't know that Chinks even existed on the face of this earth. Um, I didn't know that he was a, a big rap star or anything. So, the more that we dug into it, the more we learned about it and his and uh, his relationships. So there was a lot of link analysis and um, basically uh, cell phone data that we use. And then, when you say no video, this was a lot of things people couldn't understand why. Because initially, we were there. You know, we were there that first more that morning at the scene, and a lot of people thought it happened at the Dunkin' Donuts on Queens Boulevard at the corner there, and that it was a drive-by shooting, and why isn't there a ton of video? That's not accurate, because you showed us it happened someplace Correct. down the street. Correct. So it happened actually on Main Street and Queens Boulevard. There was a lot of construction going on at that time. It's above the Van Wick, so they were doing a lot of construction with uh, the subway station and the highway above it, so there wasn't a lot of security video over there. Um, typically, these days, uh, we have video in almost every location we could possibly get to. Right. We just didn't have it. Where his car parked, that's where it ended up at. All right. In terms of, Janelle, in terms of, you know, when it first started, you told me that f- that first morning at Hot 97 when you came to the show and you said, I, I'm going to find out who was responsible. I'm going to find out who did this. I'm never going to give this up. And and I am going to cooperate with police. And a lot of people at that time, especially coming on the heels of some some rough incidents that happened in the <clears throat> with police, people were going, wait a minute, she's really going to do that. Why did you, what made you so certain that that was the route to go? Um... For me, it was just more so about justice. I, I just feel like he deserves that. Um, you know, we as a family deserve that to know who was responsible and to make sure that the whole situation is handled accordingly. Um, for me, a big part of my job was just staying in contact with the detectives that was on the case. And of course, you constantly kept it on a platform for us as far as the streets go to make sure that nobody didn't feel like we brushed it under the rug. Um, it, the, the main important thing was to let the public know that we are staying on top of it and we are going to keep it in the public eye until the day that this is finally over. And, and so, me, tell, talk with us about the hip hop code of silence, because that was one thing I, that I'm, I'm quite sure detectives came up against was, you know, nobody, everybody knows something, but nobody says anything, and nobody, you know, nobody, nobody all of a sudden knows anything. Tell me about that. Why is that because of the code of the streets? I think there's definitely a part of that. Um, And just this kind of no snitching mentality, right? That even if you know something, 
you just don't speak about it. And sometimes that can be because of self-implication, <laughs> that if you say something, then someone can kind of go through your, the skeletons in your closet and point the finger as well. Um, and again, I feel like, by and large, no one's hands are totally clean, so people just kind of have a very hands-off approach. And I think the other part of it is in hip-hop, we're somewhat jaded, right, after Big died, Pac, Big L, Jam Master J, we're used to unsolved crime. So the idea that one of our own, the crime could be solved is crazy. And it's pretty unrealistic to see that happen. So I think a lot of people are just jaded by the system. Um, to see a conclusion to this case is actually very heartening because we're not used to it. To see some progress. All right. This is Street Soldiers. I'm your host, Lisa Evers. We'll be back right after this. Reliving that day all over again and getting those phone calls. It's it, it, it's a lot, you know, and it's like no matter how much time passes by, it, it's not something that you can over overcome. Lieutenant Rudolph, one of the questions that we keep getting is, how do you guys know that these are the right people? Because this was an investigation that went on for what, like two years, more yeah. than. Give us a sense of, of what, what you had to do and why you, why you think the NYPD believes these were the suspects responsible and arrested them. Well, to, throughout the two-year investigation, I mean, uh, we did incredible amounts, detectives did incredible amounts of investigative work, and we traveled to probably half a dozen states tracking down leads. Uh, any kind of lead that came up, even how far-fetched it might have seemed, we followed up on it. Uh, a lot of it worked on, like I said, uh, link analysis and cell phone data research that we did. So and, and let me just have, stop you right there. So what do you mean, what is link analysis? Link analysis is, um, you know, uh, so if we don't have any witnesses, we're going to start with the victim. So the victim is actually going to help us out. So who is linked into the victim? So it would be friends, relatives, um, co-workers, uh, business associates. So we had to track down basically uh, as many people as we could that were uh, related to chinks in some way. So you're going through all of these all of these records, checking into all of these people, and what did you guys find? Well, essentially, um, you know, we went back from the time he was shot, and we worked all the way backwards. Um, so we tracked him down to uh, an event that he went out to in a club in Brooklyn um, that was on Instagram, so the the whole world knew that chinks was going to be there. So that these two guys knew that he was going to be there, had some kind of beef going on, and it was uh, for a few years now. And essentially, they hunted him down, and they followed him to Queens, um, and uh, they tried to get into another um, uh, location, and that place was closed. So uh, Chinks and, and one of his friends and his uh, security team they split, and Chinks was on his way home. Um, and when they got to uh, the main street, he got stuck at a light, and that's when he was ambushed. And then these two individuals, the, the, the theory that you have that you told us in the, in the past, the, that this, the main, one of the main, uh, one of the two suspects that's, that's currently facing murder charges, mm -hmm. Quincy Homer, that he had a beef with chinks that went back to Rikers Island? We do. We believe in 2009 they had some kind of physical altercation at Rikers Island. And um, so it carried on since then. And it, it uh, came to a hilt, I believe, in April of uh, 2015, the month before he was killed. Um, they were at a concert in Philadelphia. And I think they had some kind of uh, words on stage. And uh, that's when uh, Quincy really uh, amped up his uh, mission to get back at Chinks. So this wasn't a question of like words are exchanged and gunfire, you know, they he goes to find the shooter allegedly goes to find the person. This was something that had been building building up and that was very deliberate. No, this this was very planned out and uh, it was very sophisticated as we'll learn as the court uh, proceeds through trial. Um, they they went out of their way to find out where Chinks was going to be that night and they stalked him and hunted him and uh, followed him all the way from Brooklyn to Queens. Janelle, this has got to be hard for you to, to hear this every sorry. single time. I'm, I'm sorry that you have to hear it, but I'm, I appreciate you being here with us. To, you. What, when, you hear, when you hear these things, what kind of goes through? <clears throat> through you want to share that with us? Yeah, it's hard, you know. Um, it's like no matter how much time passes, you constantly have to relive those images. Um, you know, just reliving that day all over again and getting those phone calls it's it, it, it's a lot you know and it's like no matter how much time passes by 
it, it's not something that you can ever overcome. It doesn't matter where your life is at, what's going on, when you just think about the tragedy that we had to deal with and the reasoning never being good enough, it's, it, it's, it's just hard. You know, this time around this year and birthdays and holidays, it's, it's always hard. Sorry. No, no. I'm. So, we'll get you some. We'll get you some tissue. So I, I can imagine the. Um, but so even for for people that haven't gone through what you've gone through, because again, it's just, it's just you know being a news reporter and seeing people how they react in, in these circumstances, and seeing how you've handled it and in, in getting to know you and the and the family over the last couple of years, it's just like the. You, your life moves on, right? Because yeah. you, you, your business, the kids are growing, they're getting older, they have specific needs emotionally, they need you in a different way than they did when they were little babies. Yeah. And then, you know, your business, your career, your education, still handling his music business and all of those things. And then does, does like the anniversary snap you back and... Yeah, it always does. It always brings you back, you know, especially since we've been dealing with um, the suspects being caught, you know, having to go to court every month and sit there and face them face to face where they literally just stare at you in your eyes as if they did nothing wrong or they smirk or, you know, it's just like, it's so hard to go through that, like, and have to deal with that every single time court is adjourned for another date. And then you just, you're constantly coming face to face. And there's so much you want to do, so much you want to say, but you know that it's not the right thing to do at that time. So you just kind of have to, like, bottle up all your feelings and hold it in. So it's, 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 an, emo it's an emotional roller coaster. No, and you've handled it amazingly well. Thank you. To come that close to him. Yeah, it's you know, hard. In that courtroom there in Queens is... It's hard. In terms of in terms of Quincy Homer, he had this was a very personal thing to him. This wasn't about money, this wasn't about this it was like like just hate because he hated seeing Chinks Chinks's career doing so well. Right. So uh, it was really through old school detective work, and uh, by me that is uh, following up with uh, uh, different leads and interviewing countless people. A lot of times, like you said before, we're getting pushed back and they're not going to cooperate with detectives. Some people did cooperate. Maybe they didn't have facts about the case, but they gave us some background information. That's how we found out about uh, the personal relationship between uh, Jamal and, uh, and Chinks. Uh, so he was trying to be an upcoming rap star and uh, I guess there was some jealousy going on he wasn't as good or, or as famous nowhere near as yeah yeah so I, I couldn't even tell you but um, <laughs> uh, so I think once I got in that fight and then the incident that happened in Philly he was his career was totally pretty much destroyed so he was kind of at the end of his rope correct in terms of in terms of the the career thing he had like yes. one single out meantime at that point chinks song was being played yes. on hot 97 all the time mm -hmm. it was being played in the clubs and yeah. and that type of thing yeah so it just um i just uh boiled over till after that philadelphia incident that's what we believe and then i uh, set him on this path that kind of uh, set it on this yeah. determined and he was de determined <clears throat> so it was a very sophisticated operation that he did i mean like i said we, he hunted him down and ambushed him and uh that's the facts that'll play out in court <laughs> Janelle, you're gonna keep up the uh, keep up the pressure throughout this. Yes, yes, definitely. All right. Well, you know we're gonna stay on it. I know <laughs> we're gonna stay on it definitely. But um, I, I hope there's justice and I hope there's yeah. some peace and some closure, you know, for for your family. And I want to thank all of you for being with us for thank this episode for of Street Soldiers. Somia, thanks for giving us a perspective. We appreciate it. Thank Somia you. Krishna Murthy, Janelle, keep up the uh, keep up just a great example too. Thank you. you know, of just of being a woman handling it all. Thank it's amazing. You. We need, we need examples like that now. <laughs> thank, thank, you. thank you so much. And Lieutenant Rudolph, thank you to you and the team for uh, you know, making the arrest, giving people hope that justice can be, uh, can be served in this particular case. So thank you very much for being with us. We thank appreciate you. it. appreciate that. All right, thank you. Uh, remember, use your mind. It's your best weapon. I hope it's your only weapon. I'm Lisa Evers. Let's push for peace. <laughs>